This is the, the, the very first digital camera that was uh, built in 19... I, I built this in 1975. actually took its first picture right at the end of 1975. And um, it was made with all standard parts that were around our laboratory at the time. And it was really part of a, just sort of an experiment to see if I could build a camera that was filmless, basically no film, and no paper required for printing. And uh, this camera would have hopefully no moving parts as well. <laughs> had this success that, that just was um, like a little uh, uh, blip of what may happen in the future. At the time, we had no idea if it would work out or not. Um, we, uh, I, I did this project, and then I was hooked on digital photography personally. I worked on digital photography for my entire career at Kodak because uh, I got excited about the concept. But uh, it takes a while for people to warm up to it. So I'm pleased and, and, and proud to have been uh, to been able to take a one small step in that long set of steps that have gotten us to where now photography is everywhere, right? I mean, what an exciting time for, for being alive. The, the pictures are about the entire world is at our disposal, and uh, it's remarkable. And so, so to be a part of that small timeline is just a great honor. What we were doing in the mid-70s, we were taking pictures without film and we were displaying them without printing them. I mean, people were interested in it, but could it ever be practical? So I was challenged a lot about its practicality. When indeed would this ever be practical for consumers? Right? And, and I knew it would be a generation. Uh, I said between 15 and 20 years uh, to get to a basic, basically a 2 million pixel imager. So it was uh, a lot of questions, a lot of curiosity. And, um, and, you know, obviously being inside of a, a fundamentally a film-based company, uh, we never spoke about this work. None of this work was ever described publicly until 2001. I think that um, if, you let your, if you let your imagination go and you see that the, basically the cost of capturing an image now is zero, if you say that, right? Then all of a sudden, now, maybe we can break down some of the barriers that have traditionally list, uh, existed for years. For example, what's more universal in communication than a picture, right? I mean, language is all part of different cultures. Lots of times we don't understand uh, when someone writes a book in a foreign language, for example. But you can go to that country and take a picture and everybody understands it. So maybe with photography being so ubiquitous and so useful and so cheap and so easy to do that we can now start to go back to maybe where the Egyptians started, where language is now a series of pictures. Right? And then well, we communicate universally with pictures. And so I'd, I'd love to see some thinking done in, the, in, that, in, that, in that arena. Oh, yeah, I love that. My wife gets always annoyed with me because I... I go buy the latest gadgets and uh, I play with them. I, 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 love, I love good products. I, I, I was in commercialization for many years, so I, I enjoy gadgets. I enjoy electronics and imaging and things like that, and I enjoy good products, products that are designed well. So I, 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 I usually pick those things up, and I'll always wander around in stores. My wife, if we go to a mall and there's a, a Best Buy or something like that, she can lose me. She knows where to find me. I'm usually wandering around there looking at the different ideas and products and stuff. So, so I am a gadget person. I love them, and uh, I collect too many of them, according to my wife.